The Alamo is a 1960 movie that dives into the historic battle of the Alamo. It features a cast of characters portraying real-life figures like Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, and William Travis. One of the most beloved roles is John Wayne's portrayal of Davy Crockett. The movie presents a dramatic retelling of the Texans' fight against Mexican forces during the Texas Revolution. As the story unfolds, viewers are in for a treat with many surprising, amusing, and poignant moments. Stay tuned for some fascinating trivia about the making of the film and the actual events it depicts. We're eager to hear your favorite character and any special memories you have related to this classic film. Share them with us in the comments below. In the realm of film history, there exists a tale of two versions, each offering distinct perspectives on a pivotal moment in Texas history. A notable difference lies in the length of footage between the original presentation and subsequent releases. Approximately 30 minutes were excised from the film to maximize screenings and box office returns. This truncation altered the narrative significantly, sacrificing depth for commercial gain. The removal of scenes impacts the story profoundly, enriching character development and clarifying motivations. Viewers find themselves drawn closer to the narrative, particularly during the intense climax. While the edited version pays homage to the Texas struggle for freedom, the release of the original or director's cut elevates the homage further. Interestingly, the film has garnered a more appreciative following among Western movie enthusiasts in the United Kingdom. Steering away from the lighter aspects, viewing the film can pose challenges. The extensive cast occasionally results in a drawn-out feel, exacerbated by instances of overacting. Colonel Travis's constant yelling, portrayed by Lawrence Harvey, can be distracting for some viewers. In terms of historical accuracy, creative liberties are taken. For instance, Jim Bowie's portrayal suggests he may have perished before the Alamos events unfolded. Historical accounts of the Mexican onslaught and American troops' actions differ from the movie's depiction. Those seeking a more accurate portrayal are advised to turn to General de la Pena's book. In summary, the film offers both an edited version catering to mass audiences and a director's cut providing a more nuanced perspective. This dichotomy adds layers to the appreciation of this cinematic portrayal of the 1836 Texas struggle for freedom. In 1975, after many years of appearing in films, there was a noticeable change. John Wayne, a famous actor known for his tough roles, didn't act in any movies for the first time in 47 years. People wondered why he suddenly stopped. Some thought he might be sick, while others guessed he was unhappy with Hollywood. But whatever the reason, it was clear that John Wayne had left his mark on movies. His last film, The Shootist, started filming the next year. It was like his goodbye to the big screen, a fitting way to end his career. As he finished filming for the last time, he knew he had made a big impact on movies. John Wayne, known for his iconic roles in Western films, particularly resonated with Kurt Russell, whose father had worked with Wayne. Russell's ability to mimic Wayne's voice and mannerisms was showcased in Death Proof. The film portrays the heroic deaths of figures like Davy Crockett, despite conflicting accounts from a Mexican officer's memoir. Wayne's stature in cinema was recognized by the American Film Institute, ranking him among the greatest actors of all time. Amidst discussions about John Wayne's comments in a Playboy interview, there were renewed calls in 2019 to change the name of the airport in California named after him. This brought attention to Wayne's connection with a famous 1960 film about the Battle of the Alamo. Interestingly, in the 1950s, there were several ideas about Wayne portraying World War II General George's Patton in movies. But Patton's family always opposed these plans, especially Wayne's involvement. In the mid-1960s, there was a thought of Wayne playing a role in a movie called 16th of December, The Battle of the Bulge. It was a big project supported by Dwight D. Eisenhower and the Defense Department. But it didn't happen because Warner Brothers decided to use the title for another war film, casting Henry Fonda instead. Notably, original drawings of the Alamo were used to recreate the building for the 1960 film, making it look real and accurate. In summary, controversies about John Wayne's remarks and his possible roles add interesting context to the 1960 film. The use of original Alamo drawings makes the replica in the movie more authentic. Did you know that Denver Pyle, who played O.Z., Whitehead's dad in one movie, was actually younger than Whitehead by nine years? Richard Boone, often mixed up with Charles Bronson because they looked alike, was buddies with Bronson, and they both starred on a TV show together in the 1950s. John Wayne, famous for his roles, passed away in only eight of his nearly 200 movies, like The Alamo in 1960, where his character got killed by a lance and an explosion. 
His career covered lots of different types of movies and left a big mark on the film industry. In the world of movies, sometimes unexpected choices lead to surprising outcomes. Take, for instance, a famous actor known for his roles in cowboy films. He once picked a script that others thought wasn't good enough. Despite doubts from the director, the actor's excitement went out. Another actor, who was known for his acting skills, had a hidden talent for singing. In one movie, he surprised everyone by singing a famous song with other stars. It was a rare moment that showed a different side of his abilities. Now, back to the first actor. Among all the characters he played, one was his absolute favorite. He liked it so much that he named his own child after the character. This shows how much that role meant to him. These stories give us a glimpse into the interesting decisions and surprises that happen in the movie industry. In the mid-30s, he was hired by Columbia Pictures to make several westerns for its B unit. Columbia chief Harry Cohn accused him of misconduct, damaging his career temporarily. Despite this setback, he became a major star and rejected lucrative offers from Columbia, holding a grudge until the end. Regretting his role in another film, he once remarked on the importance of staying true to one's strengths. Upon release, audiences felt that he and Richard Widmark should have swapped roles in the Alamo. Throughout the film, General Santa Ana is depicted as a looming threat, yet he doesn't make his appearance until nearly two hours in. Portrayed by Ruben Padilla, Santa Ana only has a few brief scenes, including his arrival in San Antonio, where he offers parley, and his order for the final assault lieutenant despite minimal screen time, he leaves a lasting impression with just two lines of dialogue. John Wayne, at 51 years old, felt his days as a romantic lead were over. He believed that playing his iconic persona was the key to maintaining audience appeal. This decision came after a string of unsuccessful films, with the searchers marking a turning point in his career. When the Alamo first aired on television, it was split into two parts due to its three-hour runtime, a rare occurrence for network broadcasts at the time. This was a departure from the norm, as most feature films were limited to two hours. Notably, the longest uncut telecast of a film at that time was Ben-Hur, which ran for five hours, also in parts. In a classic film, there's a moment where Hank Worden, often credited mistakenly elsewhere, clarified that he wasn't part of a boxing scene. The decision to cast Oliver Hardy in a movie called The Fighting Kentuckian involves some initial hesitation from John Wayne. Interestingly, Stan Laurel, Hardy's partner, played a pivotal role in encouraging Wayne due to illness. Ken Curtis, renowned for his musical talent in John Ford Westerns, made a smooth transition to acting. He took on various musical roles in films like Rio Grande, and another one known as The Quiet Man. The movie showcased diverse talents, with Curtis earning praise for his performances. Throughout his career, Curtis showcased versatility, seamlessly shifting between his musical roots and acting endeavors. He brought a unique charm to every character, leaving an impression on audiences. His career extended far beyond the Alamo, making a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Indeed, his dedication and passion for his craft continued to inspire aspiring actors and musicians alike. The influence he had on films like Rio Grande and The Quiet Man is undeniable, proving that his impact goes beyond a single movie.